This project is on motorizing the Bugatti. So actually I tried many times but it never worked because whenever I put the motor on some area, the, the, motor, the gears made a creaking noise because it was four wheel drive. But then after I dismantled almost the whole back with the pistons, I took out a gear over here, like something like the same as this gear, but I took it out from here. And then um, uh, it just became a two wheel drive. After that, I attached this large motor with a three axle from the pistons with this gear from here. And that connects to this main gray gear, which powers these two wheels. But, and this way, the, it's not four wheel drive, so the motor has to apply a little power. Here's a demonstration. As you can see, it's very simple for the motor. Even though the Bugatti Chiron is very heavy, it still works. So in this, uh, in the Bugatti, I used the large motor, which is also one of the most powerful small motors Lego has created. As you can see in the back, the, mo the motor is very thick. So it, um, it, power it ha powers a lot. I'll just show you it. That compared to a medium motor, that's almost triple the speed. So then if you apply that much force to like a really heavy car and make a two wheel drive, the motor just puts the transmission to the two wheels. After that, it does the rest. This was just an experiment. Later, I'm going to assemble everything back and find a way for the motor to connect somewhere back, he back here. Now I just finished the motor assembly. As you can see, um, everything is the same. It's just I put the motor inside. So to put the motor to the battery box all the way in the middle of the seat, you have to use this motor wire. It goes all the way through here under the spoiler. And then you connect it to extension cable here, like right in front of the suspension. Um, after that, what I've done, the, sus the extension cable, I kind of like put it at the lower part of the piston so that it doesn't get stuck. This is the extension cable. I just tucked it down there. And then I brought it out over here. And that area connects to the seat. Which, and, I bring, and I brought it right here. This is um, how uh, you can set the motor with the extension cable to bring it to the front. For motorizing the Bugatti, the pieces I had to buy was um, a... L motor, the large motor, IR receiver, a battery box, and an extension cable, and for the IR receiver, the remote. These these things are just made out of the extra pieces. You don't really need to care about that. Also, very one important uh, point about this, as you can see, this like bumper thing is sticking out because the if you put it more in, it's gonna tweak the motor. So. Two things, this is the first one, the bumper, instead of being all three spaces there, it has to be one space back so that the motor can fit. The next thing is the spoiler, cause you can see that you use a, you use the special like dog bone technique piece to connect the spoiler into that area, like right over here. But then um, since the spoiler goes there and I took that place of the motor, I took out the dog bone piece and the and the and the things connecting to it like the parts which connect to the spoiler so I just left the L piece I left just left one piece connecting to the spoiler and then I and then I connected the spoiler with the axles a two axle over here and a no axle over here so that the key can fit one surprising thing is that you'll find that the spoiler will still work even though the motor is taking that place. I'm going to make it run. So first, I put the IR receiver to cut this like seat bag over here and the, the part where you sit on over here for the battery box. I connected the IR receiver on that, put the battery box here, and I just tucked in the wires on the side. It's very simple to turn on, just like that. 
And now I'm going to give you a demonstration of this in action. Since the motor is connected on the extension cable uh, is connected on the red part of IR receiver, you push the red forward for forward and backward for backward. As you can see, it's turning because right now I haven't put the servo motor, so it's still um, hand automated. Uh, in my next video, or next part of my video, I'll be showing how to put the servo motor in. This specific project was just making the back wheels run. And the pieces needed for just the back wheels running are the IR remote for making the car go forward and backward, battery box, IR receiver for the remote and the battery box for the IR receiver to connect an extension cable for the motor so that the wire can connect all the way to the IR receiver and of course the L motor or large motor itself. So now I'm going to talk about how I put the servo motor. <clears throat> First we have to take out the hood and this rim thing and this bumper thing this piece for like the front and you also have to remove this piece along with these pieces this will give you full uh entrance to the back to the front where the servo motor is going to be kept right here so if you need the servo motor of course I had to remove a piece over here which was connected to a one flathead four axle, the flathead gray, dark gray four axle. So I had to take that out and instead put a five axle which is which has no flathead and then I stuck it in there. That I connected that to the gear and um, I connected the servo motor in that gear and then I used these two extra pieces from the Bugatti itself and I connected them here because inside they actually connected that thing which will steady the servo motor. But also one very important point <clears throat> is to, you see these gray things, these gray long beams? You'll have to shift them by two for that to fit because when you fit over here, when you actually first build the Bugatti, there's like two, one hole here empty even with no gray beam, but you have to shift it by one so that this bottom part of the servo motor will fit inside. Now I have assembled the Bugatti back. There's actually the trunk over here, the frunk. It's sticking out a bit because of the servo motor, but that's no problem because um, the servo motor is a quite big motor because it only turns 90 degrees, so that's no problem. I put the battery over here and actually, for the motor over here, the L motor over there, I used a 20 inch extension cable. And for the servo motor here, to get all the way over here, I used an 8 inch extension cable. It's right behind this wheel. That is the connecting point right there. And I connected that to the IR receiver because I took both those like seats things out. I put the IR receiver backwards on one and the battery box settled on one. So, and I tucked just the wires in the back over there. Now the way it works, you use some extra pieces with the remote. The blue one over here, it's supposed to go on, you see this red thing? This goes on the red one over here, cause red for red. It goes here and this piece you need a half axle half clip with it to go here like that and both the IR receiver and remote have to be on channel 4 for both of them to work and to turn it you just turn on the battery hub and then red means forward I mean uh, so now I'll show you how it runs so first, as I explained in the earlier video, turn on the battery box. Red means go, blue means turn, because the servo and motor are connected
you're done with that, now I'll show you how it works.